And say officially announced that name, image, and likeness is now legal or not. It was already legal. It's now allowed under the NCA bylaws. Uh, they put out a press release talking about it. And immediately, not only are kids now like getting involved with name, image, and likeness, but the schools. You see LSU put out like a hype trailer about, and it's called NILSU. So it's like about promoting. <laughs> Like these schools are like really leaning in it. Yeah. Texas did like a big thing about trying to like help these athletes with their branding. Uh, so the schools recognize, hey, we need we can't like be like against it. We need to be like in front of it, which is great because that means even more kids are going to find ways to monetize their names, their image and likeness. And you see a lot of people already getting many deals here and there, call it football players, basketball players, et cetera. And the first thing I think about is, because we're a flow track running podcast, how will this affect NCA running? And the thing about when you go pro and running is you're not really, you're not like going pro isn't like you're getting paid by a team for your athletic performance. You're signing an endorsement deal, which is basically the same mm -hmm. thing as signing an endorsement deal with Cliff Bars, right? Hey, I'm Gordon, mm -hmm. eat Cliff Bars, this promo code below. That's the same thing as saying, hey, I'm Gordon. I love Nike Spikes. Click this promo code below. And so yeah. there is a theoretical possibility that an athlete could have a pro deal with a, with a shoe company and still be NCAA eligible. I talked to some coaches uh, immediately as this was happening. I got a variety of perspective of what it means. Some people were like, oh, no, you, you can't do it. But then by the end of the conversation, they were like, actually, you might be able to. And they were like, mm -hmm. oh, they don't know yet, right? Because it has never been done. But the main thing is a pro contract. The only thing in a pro contract that would break the NCA rules is if in the contract that has performance-based incentives, because then you're being paid for your athletic performance. But if it all it is, it's like we're giving you fifty thousand dollars to wear Nike, that yeah. has nothing to do yeah. with your performance. So, if these kids are going to want to have their cake and eat it too, aka be in the NCA and get paid for a running apparel, they just need to make sure their contracts don't have the phrase, don't have performance bonuses. And time maybe bonuses. you yeah. say yeah. time bonus, or maybe you say like, hey. I will renegotiate a contract once I graduate and then add the time bonuses in for like the second year of the contract or whatever. But Well, and you'd have to have it yeah. jive with the school sponsor as well too, I would guess, especially if it's a footwear company. I don't think- Yes and no. I don't, no, they can't. You think they're going to let them run? Cooper Tier's going to be endorsing Adidas? No, they, he can endorse Adidas. He just can't wear Adidas spikes at practice or- at competition, but he could row run in Nikes, win a NCAA cross country title, and then go home on his Instagram and be like, "Maybe I wore Nikes, but guess what? These Adidas spikes—they're so much better." And show that he could I mean, do that. I don't know. They, they still have to. There's still a lot they got to figure out here because I know different states have different laws with this, and some states have no laws about it, and those are going to turn into the Wild West until there are until those actual legislation but i know in some circumstances it still needs to be approved like it's got to be approved and go through the school and that's where i would think you'd run into a roadblock with that situation now if it was a energy bar or a sports drink or an existing or a sunglass company where the school did not have a conflicting sponsor i don't think that would be any any sort of issue here are the questions i have or the thoughts well the you thing ready? is the conflicting sponsor thing though i feel like that only applies when you're on like in the capacity of being an athlete for them. Like there's what's stopping a, a kid who runs at a school that is Nike wear Brooks shoes all summer long, like, and Instagram it out. Like as long as Brooks is okay with them only wearing Nike stuff when they're in their uniform, as long as they're like, Hey, we're, I mean, probably it's not a good look for Brooks. Cause it'd be like, what are we doing? But you can't prevent someone from wearing Under Armour flip-flops just because you go to a Nike well, school. Well, I'm saying there's different laws around this. Like Texas, for example, they can't get deals with alcohol, 
drug gambling companies. Alabama, yeah. you have to have approval from the school. There was an example in a, I think it was an ESPN article about the, where is it? The football player who uh, his shoe was famous. Was it the LSU Alabama game? Um, someone can correct me. The guy, oh, threw, yeah. the guy, the other player threw his shoe and got yeah, the, the shoe. Yeah, got yeah. the penalty. Yeah. And in this article, they basically said, oh man, he'd get paid a lot for that shoe, right? He could go home and auction the shoe off now to a fan and get paid. But the article says, however, in some states, Taylor, that's a football player, will be restricted from immediately entering into such contracts. And one of the most notable differences among state laws, some require athletes to have their ventures approved before they're executed. It could mean uh, athletes missing out on income derived from viral marketing sensations like Taylor's shoe. And I'm assuming if things need to get approved, part of that would be making sure you don't run afoul of existing sponsorship deals. But anyway, that aside, I think the majority of the stuff is going to come from smaller deals and online stuff and influencer yeah. campaign. Because as we can see, Matt Bowling's got 200,000 Instagram followers. Yeah. Track, and field ath- track and field athletes, and you see this in some of these examples of these articles, this is not just about football and basketball. You could be on the tennis team and have a gajillion TikTok followers, right? Because it's more about the personality that you've cultivated and the the brand that you've created throughout the years. Like tons of women's basketball players have huge followings on social media. So it's not just confined to the sports that you'd think about in terms of the money-making sports. It's just the people who have, yes, they're athletes and they're very, very good, but they're also creating interesting content. content yeah doing interesting things that make them desirable for sponsors just as if you know some random sophomore in the dorms who's not in sports is doing right but my questions are is this going to lead to college kids being paid more than like pro runners in certain circumstances because college runners can reach a level of fame close to some pro runners in the US they really, they, you know, they can almost reach cult, cult like status, right? Like, cause they're winning a bunch, they're on TV or they have a lot of exposure, right? Now you add in the fact that companies are going to be really likely to work with them because of their sway over the key demographic that they want, maybe in a way that a pro athlete is not. And if they've already spent all this time getting a big social media presence, a lot easier to cash in on that than someone who is just a regular old 27 year old pro athlete. And then on the flip side, Gordon, are more athletes going to stay in the college system because they're going to be able to get paid and they're going to get the best of both worlds. They're going to get access to all the facilities now, right? Paid travel. Even if they're paid travel, you have the benefit of all these schools are saying we're going to have social media coaches and brand builders and I don't know, there's maybe like a hype house or something in Austin, I bet, with all these these athletes, because they're all falling over themselves figuring out how to use this to the recruiting advantage. So you can have all that help and they're gonna be able to have the money that wouldn't necessarily be there when you turn pro for the reasons I meant mentioned before, right? So you have you know very successful 20 year old runner who's going to college and is able to win races and has uh, a following on campus is going to be more desirable in a lot of cases to to a company than someone who is not in in college, not in that circumstance. Now, the big thing is the kid still has to want to go to school and want to go to class. Yeah. But assuming they want to get a degree, this opens up a whole bunch of new options for them 